Hello, in this video, next video in the Fourier series, uh, the sixth one to be specific, we're going to look at this uh, kernel. Uh, now, this is a German name, and I've looked it up, and there seems to be maybe six different common ways to say this. Dirichle, 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 and, but it seems like the most common American way to say it is Dirichle, like, like a SH, and so... And that's actually the way I learned it, so I'm going to pronounce it Dirichlet. Now here, in studying the, the Dirichlet kernel, the goal is to develop a, a formula for the partial sum. So that's, that's sort of our ultimate goal. Not, we're not going to do that in this video, but we need to look at the Dirichlet kernel so we can do that in the next video. So, you know, as you can see here, the normal Fourier series goes to infinity, but if we stop it at some n, then it's a partial sum. So, to do that, we'll employ the Dirichlet kernel of index n. And this is it. And uh, so you can collapse these to a, a sigma a notation. And when you look at a plot of these, it wiggles about the x-axis. And actually, the more terms, meaning the bigger capital N is, the higher this peak tends to be. And that's a little off-centered. It's perfectly centered, you know, in this, on this uh, coordinate system. So the two things we're going to show on this video, A, is that the Dirichlet kernel can be written as like this, and that it integrates to 1 over the region negative pi to pi. So the proof of part A, um, from F2, we can, we'd see this identity is uh, here. The product of sine and cosine is actually the sum of these sine angles. And then you can reduce it to this. You know, you can factor out an x in each term. Okay, so we're going to use that in our proof. So if we look at this sum, so here's the sum of the cosines times sine of one half x. Notice there's no little n index here, so we could take it in as a multiplication, and that's what we do here. And then we use the identity on that, which is this. Now, if we start writing out terms of this, so put in one, put in two you know, for this, we get this sum here. So you, you stick in 1 and 1, and then 2 and 2. And this ends up being a, tel a telescoping sum. So the first term here is a negative. Oop, it's this term. So the first term here cancels with the second term here. First term here cancels with the second term here. So it does it on, on and on and on. So what's left is this one doesn't have anything to get canceled with. And then um, neither does this one. Well, so that's what it, this equals. So now, if we, if we look at this uh, original sum and this, we can divide both sides by the uh, sine of 1 half x. And so we, we, we get minus one half here and then whatever that division is. And then we take that plus to the other side and we get this. Now this is, this is the Dirichlet kernel of, of uh, size n. It can be written like this or like that. They're the same thing. So now the proof of B, the integral of it. So let's integrate from 0 to pi first of the Dirichlet kernel and then um, if we stick in this piece you know it's it's the same and then if we or if we put in this piece it's the same but we'll work with this one so the the antiderivative of one half is going to be one half x Antiderivative of each one of these terms is going to be sine over n. And that's what we get here. And we're integrating from 0 to pi. 
So you stick in pi and you stick in zero. These are all zero. But then when you stick in pi here, you get one half pi. You know, with the original divide by one half, you get one half. And then we can do the same thing for the, the other piece of the integral. So from negative pi to zero, we can integrate it and we get one half. So that implies that if we integrate over the entire region, but we break it into these pieces and then we just showed each one of those as a half, then the it integrates to one. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.